Well, I'm on my way down to God's favorite house, I call it, on this marvelous, miraculous Monday. It's the Lord's doing. We moved in here in 1989. It was in August of 1989. Reverend Dr. Doris Evelyn Davis, the founder and the visionary of Trinity All Nations Outreach. Trinity All Nations, Church of God in Christ. Trinity All Nations, House of Healing house of prayer, house of deliverance. And I'm just excited about being here one more time. Once the late king of gospel Reverend James Cleveland sat at a piano at Mount Pisgah Baptist Church of Chicago and pointed at the organ and said, Good brother on the organ over here. One of the best that ever did. His words rang with accuracy. He was right. He was right. Bishop, you, you were right on the organ when uh, Reverend Cleveland sat at that piano and pointed and said, I want to thank one of the greatest <laughs> ones to ever do it. He introduced all the gospel all-stars and he said, and the young man, one of the greatest organists, the young man at the organ. I said, wow! <laughs> we always respected each other. We always respected each other. He never spoke out of turn to me ever. I can't remember one time 
when he said anything negative to me or had any kind of negative connotation. Bishop Larry Roberts has recorded some timeless music, such as Serving God. Some people go around. Are you ready? And I love Jesus more today than I did on yesterday. Uh, Larry invited me to come out, and I came out, and um, my first night there, they had me present music, and that was the beginning. Bishop Roberts' music embodies his ability to inspire through his musicianship and a little food for thought through his lyrical presentation. My childhood is like with Ida B. Wells, Projects, and from there, Cabrini Green. I always tell my humble beginning, Ida B. Wells, we was the only family in the project that had an organ and a piano. This goes all the way back to my grandma. She was one of the ragtime musicians. Then my aunt, Lucille, she was another musician. And Aunt Lucille and my grandma inspired me. So my grandma would take me to Lining Hill. The only people that know about Lining Hill is the old school on Wabash. When I was a little shorty, we lived in Cabrini Green right next door here at the St. Luke Church of God in Christ. And I would walk out the projects because I loved to come to church. And I was mesmerized by Luke Austin, how he played that organ, you all. You know, that was a jazz player back in the day. But I was a little shorty, grew up here in Cabrini Greens. That's what I'm talking about. Look at here. Wow, it's all vacant land now. And Cooley House down the street. She had a favorite song, If You Just Hold Out Until Tomorrow. And when she said that, she would look at Bishop, and Bishop would get on that organ, and he would make that organ talk, If You Just Hold Out Until Tomorrow. Reverend Evelyn Davis, my auntie again, who I was talking about, she played for Reverend Davis, 516 East 43rd Street, and also the first church I was paying at now, I, forgive me, I cannot think of the church, but I remember the, the minister's name was Reverend Blunt. It was a little storefront church, and I started playing for them uh, on 71st Street. $5 a Sunday, you all. Hey, fellas, $5 a Sunday. But that was a lot of money back, um, let me go back 50, 60 years ago, you know, when I was just a little shorty. And um, I kept some money in my pocket. I always had a hustle. So I was making $5 a Sunday and her brother, no, not her brother, his brother worked with um, one of the members of Trinity All Nation. They worked together. So we was invited over one Sunday. Now my aunt was over there and my grandma was over there as well too as a musician and my aunt. So we went over there one Sunday, we was invited to go over there to sing. And um, so I got on the organ and I played. And then, you know, after that, after I played, I had another auntie that I would go over on Sunday night and play and get, make me, I always kept some money in my pocket, made an extra $5. But when I came back to church, the church I was playing for, I don't want to call the name of the church. 
I was playing for, he said, you know what, Larry? He said, I don't want you playing for nobody else on Sunday. And that kind of broke my heart when he said that. I says, why is that? I says, I could use that extra $5 on Sunday. And then he said, well, you're not good enough. I said, I'm not good enough. That kind of, you know, deflated me some. And that next Sunday, I chose not to go back. I went over to my aunt's church, 516 East 43rd Street, Trinity All Nation, Reverend Dr. Doris Evelyn Davis. Well, she knew I played, and when she came out the office, she grabbed me by my hand and pulled me to the organ. Back then, we had the Hammond organ, the C3 Hammond organ with the Leslie. She pulled me by my hand and took me up to the organ, and I played for the service. Well, I remember uh, in my early, I've been pastoring, of course, 36 years. Uh, and in my early year, probably my second year of pastoring, Pastor David allowed me to come here and speak. I spoke here on one of their, uh, I, I believe it was the anniversary or something. And uh, I just remember uh, her and remember the great church. I remember it very well. And uh, I thank God for the opportunity, even knowing her. Yeah, even knowing her. The young, vibrant musician, Larry Roberts, eluded all discouragement and made a connection at 515 East 43rd Street, Trinity All Nations Church. After the service was over with, she said, come in my office, Larry, come in my office. And she gave me an envelope, you all, it was $25. I said, oh my God. <laughs> I said, so I said, Reverend Davis, $25? She said, yeah, Larry, can you play for me? I said, no, ma'am. I said, I was mad with the, the uh, minister on today because he, he told me I wasn't good enough to play for nobody else, but I'm going back next week. So I went to school that Monday and when I came from school, my mama said, you just missed Reverend Davis and her sister, Madam Rowe. And I said, what, mama? I said, what's going on? She said, starting tonight, guess what? You're going to be playing for Trinity All Nations. I said, mom, for real? She said, yes. She said, at $25, I said, $25 a Sunday? She said, yeah, but you got to go Monday, Friday, <laughs> choir rehearsal and Sunday. I said, well, hey, you know, I can G for that. But it was my mama that got me over there. Rem came and got me. The rest is history. That, that was my humble beginning at Trinity All Nations. <laughs> song saying joy 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 since the lord saved me and it was a 45 now we did it on the real the real you all i don't think you all know what the real the real recorder is <laughs> but a real the real recorder and we released it as on the 45 and i think you can google it because larry went and googled it and sent it to me he said dad is this you all i said it's your he said that mom i said that's not mom singing i said but that's me on the organ i said that's your aunt lou on the piano so 1965 that's when I had started over there. The church was birthed in 62. So that was my first year over there and we started recording. I started writing back then when I was a little old shorty. Larry Roberts Sr. built many working relationships with his fellow Chicagoans. These relationships afforded Roberts the opportunity to practice his craft. At the time, the music industry was heavy inundated with the disco era which enabled Roberts to infuse the contemporary sounds of the time. 
with his fervent discipline for traditional gospel music. And one of those foundational relationships was with Mother Lavonia Whitley and the Corinthian Temple Radio Choir. He was a exciting uh, phenomena to gospel music because he had this real smooth gospel style that uh, was traditional yet it was open, but I was attracted to him by his commitment to ministry and his talent did not blow his mind, it blew his, it, it elevated his soul. Well, my father was pastoring, um, uh, he had pastored a storefront, he had gone to a house front, and then he had built a church out of, uh, based on faith, and he, we had started a radio ministry in the house front. So we're going to the church, into the new church, the radio choir was exciting, and in that particular time, we were really, really into heavy gospel. And so we needed a good musician to play for the broadcast. And really, it was a miracle how we got Larry. And she wasn't gonna let him play anywhere. I mean, absolutely not. But some kind of way, through some miraculous, miracle, divine order, she released Larry to us. But what really, really inspired me so about that release, Larry was so faithful to her. He was so honest and so committed. But just like he was committed to her, that commitment carried over to us. He was never, ever late. I don't want to talk about today, musicians today. I don't want to talk about that. I'm talking about Larry back in, Larry was never, ever, ever late. Never, ever, ever absent. And never, ever, ever into his own mode. It was like he had an electrical charge connection with what whatever was going on in the service. So we felt very, very, very honored to have Larry Roberts. So what, I mean, what could you say about being attracted to him? He was, he was incomprehensible. You know, to see what is happening to him today is no surprise because God rewards those that are faithful. He's a rewarder of the faithful the diligent, the excellent. Mother Lavonia Whitley from the Corinthian Temple Church of God in Christ. She was my mentor and she was my motivator. She was one of the ones, her and Charles Clancy was helped mold, made, form and fashion me into the musician that I am today. And the company is musician, not one of them musicians that's way out there and all around. And this was a true story when she had said it earlier, <clears throat> when I would be rehearsing, now I only played over there on Sunday night. I went over there on Sunday night to play because all the broadcasts was live back in the day. When we finished Trinity, I would go over there and I would play at the nine o'clock hour live broadcast. I would leave there and go play for the Reverend Milton Bronson. Live broadcast, 11 o'clock, 11 to 12. So we didn't get home till one o'clock Monday morning. That's how much I had a passion for love. But let me get back to say what motivated me off into writing when I was going through some rough and tough times. And then when Mother Whitley was up teaching, I said, I could do that. I can do that when she was giving her different techniques. And then what molded me and formed and fashioned me was her again. I would go over to the house and practice. And I'll do my practicing. And when I would come to choir rehearsal, 
She changed from that Dr. Jekyll to Mrs. Hyde in a moment. She was, and I was looking down one time at my hands because I was messing up a chord and she stopped the whole choir. She said, what are you doing? I said, I'm looking at my hands. She said, no, you're not. She embarrassed me right in front of everybody. She said, you're supposed to know this music before you get here. Three things you have to do. Watch me, watch the preacher, and watch the solo singer. Other than that, that's it, that's all. And don't talk back to me. That's what started me, to being able to be well-rounded, to being able to play with my eyes shut, but make sure that you concentrate. She said, make sure you concentrate. She said, you need to know every muscle that's moved in their head, every muscle that's moved in their neck. You watch their muscles, and when they get ready to make their change, that's when you change. She says, wow. The Bible says your gift will make room for you in place before great men. Going around her and my church as well, too, that was the first opportunity that I had the opportunity to go to the Eric Crown Theater. I said, oh, my God. Michael Wade, Michael was right there with us, and we, I got a chance to meet a lot of opportunities, a lot of different singers, the Hawkins. Everybody was coming through there. I said, God, he said he'll place you before great men, and I was just... I was just, just, just excited and I was just elated and humbled to be in the presence. That was the first time. And we went back again a second time. Here it is too. We went back a second time, but here it is another opportunity. Everybody wants to be on Jubilee Showcase. I don't know if you remember Jubilee Showcase, but if you go back in the archives, Sid Ardow came over to the church. He came over to Corinthian Temple at the time. He came over to the church and auditioned them. And their program was live back in the day, you all. It was no recording. It was a live recording, and it was on a Sunday, and he asked the you to come over there, and I had opportunity. I'm in the archives of Theodore Dow on Jubilee Showcase back in the 70s. Wow. With Larry Roberts at the organ, Lewis Ball at the piano, the Corinthian Radio Choir, as Joanne Allison leads the way with I've Got to Tell Somebody. Chicago found difficulty in containing Larry Roberts Sr. enthusiasm for music, and with a little faith, Larry Roberts landed a spot on the rostrum of Savoy Records. First, I had to make a 45. You had to make a demo back in the day. And I forgot the name of the producer that we went down to Chess Records and we did a 45. I wrote another song. Uh, wow, yeah, I got to think of the song that I wrote. Oh, oh, that's when I did Just a Closer Walk With Thee. Just a Closer Walk With Thee. And we had recorded that. And I tried to get it played on the radio and I'm going to give a shout out to my guy, that one, some of these don't, some of these DJs wanted you to pay to play. And I said, excuse me, but I called my friend, Reverend Dr. T.L. Barrett. I said, Doc, I said, I got a 45. I said, won't nobody play it for you? He said, now, Larry, he said, I'm going to tell you the truth. He said, now, I'm going to be honest with you. He said, I'm going to listen at it first. And if it's not air quality, he says, I can't play it. I listened at the broadcast that Saturday night. And who was the first song that came on? He said, Trinity All Nations and Larry Roberts, just a close to walk with thee. The phone lit up. And I started sending it out to the different record labels. And that's how record, I got a call from Savoy Records from Fred Mendelssohn. Got a call from Savoy. And they said, we would like to do you. I said, wow, are you all serious? He says, yes. Now with the Trinity All Nations Combined Choir garnering national exposure, Roberts afforded that exposure to many past musicians and singers that he had met throughout his musical journey in Chicago. 
how we met. Let's go back to how we met. I was playing at Corinthian 4520 West on Washington Boulevard at 9 o'clock, the 9 o'clock hour on Sunday night. It was live broadcast. And um, I was there and I looked back in the back and you were sitting on maybe about three pews back in the back of the yeah. church. And I really didn't know you at the time and know of you, but you kept hanging around, you kept hanging around. And I finally got to meet and know who Michael Wade was. <laughs> and when we started connecting and that chemistry came with us, ma'am, what a team we came. Oh, it was you, it was Louis Ball oh. and myself. We, I thought it was the, well, what can I name us, the three musician tears? Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> we played all, all over, levels. we played all over the place. We yeah. played for everybody. Yeah. We played for the Bear System, we played for Milton Bronson, we played we for played the everybody. volume, we was on TV, we played for everybody back in the day. When they would come to town to record, they would call us yes, and ask us to come and be their music. Old Neil Twins, we did that everybody. live in Corinthian. Oh, yeah. Everybody, wow, that was just awesome. Don't forget about Rip Eyes Equipment. Well, you know, Eyes oh, yeah. Equipment was on there and Leotin Dupree oh, yeah. and Albertine of the things we did with Albertine, it was just off the chain back I did the actually three different albums on uh, Reverend Eyes Equipment. Yes, 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 right, absolutely. Uh, he gave everybody an opportunity to sing. If you could sing, he gave you that chance to do it. And I was one of the solo singers here at Trinity and a lot of songs that he gave me, I would tell him, I don't think I can do that, Pastor. He was like, come on, Jude, you got to do it. And I did it. And if he didn't encourage me, I wouldn't have had the love that I have for music now. Going, moving into ministry is the next level of my life. I've always known since I was able to see him that there was always, gonna, there was always deeper, you know, more uh, to, to some of us than just being a musician. And so, um, uh, my heritage and my legacy is all of that is connected to, deeply connected to this church. You know, uh, not just my father, but again, my mother, my grandmother was one of the lead singers here at the church, um, Vera Lee Rogers. So, um, it's just, you know, again, everything I am, a lot of what I am, so much of what I know and uh, so much of who I become has so much to do with the legacy of this church and Bishop Larry Roberts. Uh, that the this was gonna go out throughout the world and the people hear the music that was coming from my heart to reach the people, that somebody be saved, somebody be delivered, somebody be set free. It is proven that music calms the savage beast. It is proven that music can shift the atmosphere around where you are. It is proven that music can also bring demonic atmosphere. But I wanted to be the one that I want my music to go out and lift somebody. I wanted my music to go out and heal somebody. I wanted my music to go out and for somebody to make their lives better.
Willie, that was our first album. Willie Rogers, yes, one of the world's greatest guitar. I think he was here before his time, and may he rest in peace. Uh, the Bible says your gifts will make room for you, but he was second to none. Every one of our records that we're on, that every one of them, he was right there with me when we played for Reverend Cleveland over at Mount Pisgah. <clears throat> For the gospels, all the gospel all stars, Willie was right there. Every place I would go, I would take Willie with me. We played for Albertina, go to God and pray. That's Willie Rogers on the guitar. All of that that I did, Willie, we was like a Paul and Silas team, tag team in the music. I, as far as my knowledge and as much as I remember, uh, Bishop or Uncle Larry, as I called him for years, uh, they were like best friends, best buddies. I know my dad had the. Uh, utmost reverence and respect for his big brother Larry. Um, I remember just the way you talked about him, the way I was brought up to uh, have appreciation for their relationship and uh, it carried over into my relationship with Bishop Robert's son. Uh, we've been close, closer than close. Uh, his son, little Larry, is the big brother I never had and uh, is responsible for so much of what I know as a man and as a musician. Uh, that's truly my family, and uh, I, that relationship was developed and cultivated by my father and Lil Larry's father, Bishop. By 1979, the late queen of gospel, Albertina Walker, had been successful with her group, The Caravans, and her solo career. Her 1979 album, entitled Please Be Patient With Me, presented a new side of the queen, and she was backed up by the Trinity All Nations Combined Choir, and of course, under the direction of Larry Roberts Singer. Roberts was a great match and went on to record three albums with Albertina Walker. We meet Albertina Walker. It goes back to the record company. Now, our founder, Reverend Dr. Doris Evelyn Davis, she was a quartet singer. So she knew all of the quartet. You know, she knew Reverend Cleveland, she knew Albertina, she knew all the uh, Inez Andrews, all of them, because all of them come from, back in the day, it was a Southside Community Choir. Willie Webb, he was the organizer of the Southside Community Choir. And so everybody knew of her. So everybody used to come over to us when we was on 43rd Street in the little storefront. Shirley Caesar, all of them used to come through there. The, the, the uh, uh, Lucius Hall and all of them would come through there because they knew of her being a singer. So we was on Savoy. We was already on Savoy because we had did our records on Savoy. We had did the three records. And they wanted to do a live session with Albertina in Chicago and they needed a choir and they recommended us, they said, Albertina said, go over to Trinity All Nations, 104th in Michigan, and listen at this choir. She says, I know them. She said, I know, I know them. But let, she said, yeah, she said, let me go over and listen at them. And when she came over and heard us, and then they said, now this is what we're gonna do. This is what we're gonna do. They said, we're bringing in Reverend Cleveland and Albertina. It's gonna be the dynamic duo on uh, recording them. I said, it's going to be who? I said, the king and the queen. And when he walked through the door, I said, oh, my God. Reverend Cleveland, are you serious? Please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. That record hit number one. It went across the nation. And that's me on the organ with them licks. That's me on there. Now, John Hastings was his own personal pianist. 
Y'all I mean, probably don't know John Aston. Okay, John Aston, that was him on uh, when he was playing uh, uh, Jesus is the Best Man. That's him on there. But that was me on the organ with them licks with Please Be Patient With Me. And the second song was I Gotta Feel It. Actually, I'm the co-writer of I Gotta Feel It. If you didn't know the mechanics of the music, they didn't tell you. I wrote all of the lyrics except for the first one. I wrote the choir part. I wrote the second and third stanzas of that. Now, that was the first album that we did with Albertini. You know, we did another one with as well, too. It was at West Point. We did another record. That's when I think you heard me singing on there. Man, I can't sing. I <laughs> got to serve the Lord till I die. <laughs> oh, she said, come on, Larry. You got to get a couple of licks off of that. church and seeing all the people that came through this church man is like unimaginable Albertina Walker uh, I was little I was old enough to see uh, you know experience being with James Cleveland you know when he came and did recordings at the church um, Ricky Grundy uh, man um, who else can I say Tony Shelton uh, you know the Percy Beatty's and uh, I mean I can go on and on about all of the people who I've had the opportunity you know uh, Timothy Wright Douglas Miller used to be over at the house eating leftovers, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I had the opportunity to just to kind of see everybody, and it was just amazing, you know? And I, I feel like I took on the mantle that my dad, you know what I'm saying, pretty much set for me, so it was dope. Definitely have a great connection. Um, give you a couple examples of the connections we have. Um, I remember when I first came here, he would tell me, he would hold up the number one, and for me, I'm thinking like, oh, go to church, number one. But he was actually telling me what key he wanted to be in. If you read music, one flat, key of F, two flat, B flat. So over the years, learning him, understanding him with those process and, you know, just body chemistry when I know to take him up and down and stuff like that. Um, Dad has had some ups and downs, but I still stuck by him through the whole process. One of the reasons that I felt like it was necessary to have this done is because, you know, my father always say the fruit don't fall too far from the tree, right? I'm just like my dad. I always say that's my hero, right? I'm just like him. Um, I heard Mother Whitley saying that, you know, Larry was never, ever, she kept emphasizing, ever, never, ever late. I'm the same exact way, man. I'm never late. I believe in being on time. If I have an obligation to somebody, you know, I don't want to let them down because if I'm late or if I let them down, then I don't want what they have going on to fail. So I make it my business never to be late. I make it my business that if I make a commitment to somebody, I make sure that I'm there and I get it from my dad, right? Um, and whatever I do, I put my best foot forward. You know, I used to pay musicians literally because if I was at, I don't care what church I was at, it was never about a paycheck. People were like, how much you want to get paid? I'm like, man, you know, whatever you give me, I just wanted to play. I was excited about playing. So with that being said, I feel like my dad, just hearing his stories, you know, I think my dad wrote a lot of songs. And I did. I think my dad played for a lot of people, and he didn't get his just due, right? Uh, my dad is a legacy in his own, in his own right. You know, uh, he's been around the people like the Thomas Dorseys and you know, uh, different people like uh, Inez Andrews and um, um, Isaac Whitman, and I mean, I can go on and on about all of the legends that he's been around. And you know, a lot of people don't know. You know, they don't know that story. They don't. They don't know what that's like. And I feel like people needed to know. You know what he did and what what he imparted into the gospel music. I could not believe I was actually the minister of music over the. It was the, the Allegro Chorale, and we had formed that 200 voice choir to come and do. They call them. Uh, what was it? The All Stars. You know when we had the All Stars when they had 
Albertine and all them up there, and they made that group, and we just called all the Berry sisters and called all of them. Now, I had already worked with them. And then when it came, because that's me playing on Where's Your Faith. I accompanied him. And then when, <laughs> when he turned around, he called me the Lord's back. All in there, Albertina, Reverend Isaac Whitman, and he went on to Reverend Stanley Key. He went on down the line, and he said, and one of the world's greatest musicians, the organist that there is, the young man on the organ. I said, well, I'll be doggone. I didn't say that other D word. <laughs> I said, what? And they did Are You Ready on there, too. Are You Ready is one of the lead songs on that, the, on the album. I said, really? The All-Stars, he called them the All-Stars. I said, man, really? Anyway, but God still opened up windows and brought out blessings, you know. As long as I know where I'm going, as long as I know that God got me. You know, some men will, dis men, women and men will disappoint you. But when you got the heart of God, you forgive and you forget and you move on. So I moved on and here I am, 70 years, 60 years at the church here. Six, no, no, no. The church is 60. Let me rewind. The church is 60 years old this year. I got 57 of the 60s. So I've been here. Lord has blessed me to see three scores and 10. Bless my wife and I to celebrate 50 years of marriage. And your boy's ready to retire. This is, and I, and, and the legacy will live my, my children, my grandchildren, Clemens and Jermaine. Larry used to sit right next to the organ with me and the drums, and he started playing. Clemens and Jermaine was sitting right over next to me on the organ and the drums. Now they're world-renowned musicians. My daughter's just spoiled. She sings. <laughs> but uh, that, that's it, and the legacy. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, and then what, what, you know, if you didn't know the, 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 the industry of the music, if you didn't know how to dot your I's and cross your T's, they would hook you up. They, they would get you. They would bamboozle you out of your stuff. And I didn't find out till somebody came and told me. Did they say, did you know your music was floating around? I said, what music is that? They said, I love Jesus. I said, are you kidding me? It's going, I said, really? I said, wow. I said, no, I didn't know that they were selling my music. I said, and my name is on it as well, too. So how can you, when I call a company, how can you say y'all don't know who I am? And then, too, Somebody came and told me to say, did you know your music was in the hymnal book? I said, what hymnal book? They say, total praise hymnal book. Are you ready? I said, are you kidding me? I says, wow. Seriously? I said, how come <laughs> they didn't notify you? No, they didn't. But here it is in black and white, and it got my name on it as well, too. Cha-ching. He said he opened up windows and pour you out blessings. The proof is in the pudding. So my labor's not in vain. The legacy lives. I, I don't play as much as I used to, but I, I can still play a little bit. I can play a little bit. You know, I can make some statements. I can put some licks on there. Whenever uh, some of my friends come through, I told you, and they don't know the song, they beg for me to come. Can we ask Bishop to come up and, and play? I did yesterday at his funeral, I did. They said, Bishop, come on, play for me. I said, okay, all right. I say a little bit in practice, you know, keep my fingers a little bit. But you're looking at a miracle here. I told you, I had two surgeries, and God is awesome. God is good. So.